Hey there, people of YouTube. I'm back again, and I'm going to do another page one critique. Um, I'm not sure they're wildly popular, but I enjoy doing them, so there you go. Um, little bit of news. Well, I haven't got much news, to be honest, but um, I did that uh, video on the, uh, the new cover art. Uh, I had promotional jigsaws of it made up, so... I'll be doing something with those in the nearish future, probably giving them away to someone with a, a decent platform after I've had a play with them. Um, recently, I've been reading uh, The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher, I'm going to say Buellman. Anyway, um, excellent book, very, um, very well written, funny. Um, I guess I'm about two thirds of the way through that. And then after that, I hope to read um, this by Nick Kousis again. I'm probably mangling his name. Um, sent to me by one of my um, patrons, who's a, an author. And speaking of uh, Patreon, because this is a video about critique of writing, I just thought I should note that um, here's my patreon and whilst the first three levels are just um i don't know sort of social and and um about my unwritten uh, my unpublished writing and, and things like that and getting books signed and being on the discord which is is good fun um there are these two hidden upper levels and the uh they are expensive um one of the things i i get a lot of is i get a lot of um authors sending me books um or asking if they can send me a book and um publishers and agents as well and they want me to read the book and then say this is a fine book and they can put it on the cover um and when somebody asks you to do that they're asking for a lot of your time because it, especially with me because it takes me so very long to read a book um but that is small beer compared to the people who just write and say oh i've, I've written something and could you take a look at it and critique it for me because i want to become a, a better writer those people um have probably not really thought about what they're asking for because they are asking for an enormous amount of my my time and expertise um on uh on the patreon uh at this level um there's uh one of the uh many um, benefits is uh that i do a, a monthly writing critique so that these guys can send me a few of their chapters and I will go through them with a fine tooth comb, much like I do on these these page ones, but for, for several chapters, um, and send it back and say, this, "These are my thoughts, and this is uh, uh, it's a combination of editing, like it's, you, know, you don't know what dialogue punctuation is, or alternatively, you do, and you're fine." Um, and uh, a higher level, sort of how the story's working, because often I will go through an entire book um, month by month with these people. Um, so if that's something that sounds interesting to you, then there's the option. And I, I mention it because when you um, go on to the, the Patreon page, these two levels are, are generally hidden and a lot of people don't see them. And and yes, it's um, it's a lot of money, but it's also a lot of work. So you get what you pay for, I guess. Anyway, on to this um, page one critique. I will apologise now. Wobble is on my um, desk and uh, he's been looking out between the curtains and um, thrashing his tail because he's seeing birds and he's imagining eating them, but then frustrated by the fact he's not eating them and probably self-loathing because he knows he's too lazy to go out there and, and attempt to catch them. Um, but uh, that means he's pushing the curtains back and forth, changing the light levels and, and thrashing his ta tail through my paperwork, which is making some uh, some noise that you may or may not be hearing. Uh, if he looms into view, you'll know what's what's going on. Um, OK, so this page one is by um, a guy called John Wren, sent in to me, um, I guess, seven years ago now. And um, I reviewed it and there's a my traditional disclaimer about these just being my opinions, which you should read, but I'm going to scroll through. I'm going to do my traditional um, read of the uh, the text, and then I'll go through the notes that I, I made about it. Let's just enlarge that a bit. Okay, so here's my fairly poor reading of, of the thing. You have to forgive my um, pronunciation failures in advance. Howls from the 
Eivor tolls ripped through the air, climbing louder, and the forest trembled. Not even the large campfire I sat by could keep those lurking beasts at bay. I reached for my scarlet dawn that laid beside me on the soft moss, the short crimson barrel glimmering in the light of the fire. It wouldn't do much against a giant, against the giant Avatol wolves that patrolled the large forest. A volley of 33 millimetre rounds from my handgun would only send the wolves into a killing rage. Even so, I have always felt it felt safe to have it nearby and ready to fire. It had a regular seven round magazine, but the grip was smooth, nearly ear, black yew, and fit my hand like it was meant to be there, exactly like a glove. My paragon stood lifeless beside a tree, its hatch open and waiting. It was a power suit and the pinnacle of Malvern, Malavan military technology, and its jet black camouflage was reflected in the light of the fire. Vibration shook the ground as I stood up. If it wasn't for my scaled dragon tail, I would have lost my balance. Fuck, so they're less than a kilometre away now, this close. The tremors under my feet intensified. I hurried over to my power suit and climbed into it, putting on my helmet. The interior of my visor blinked to life and my surroundings were now a backdrop <clears throat> against the details of the suit's heads-up display. My eyes fixated on the remaining fuel displayed on the faceplate. 80%, roughly 20 hours worth of action in the Paragon. It was enough to get away and join up with my squad to finish our mission and return home. I began running, running to the edge of the Neolir forest, where the landscape opened up to green hills and plains. The great short swords sheathed on my back didn't even obstruct any of my movements. A howl shuddered through the forest, Several red dots on my heads-up display map revealed movements about 300 metres back, and they were catching up fast. I wasn't more than 30 metres from the edge of the forest when something crashed into my side from the right. My heads-up display motion sensor hadn't even noticed it. I struggled to keep myself straight as I saw it was another paragon that had that tumbled right into a tree. What the fuck? shouted the Amlan through the contact com. Didn't you see my location on the damn map? Calm down, you idiot, I snapped back. Get up unless you want to be the midnight snack for these damn elder gods. Either we flee out on the plains or we take stand here and fight. The Amlan paragon struggled to get up. Perhaps our crash had skewed something in the machinery in her paragon. You will have... To pay for this, the soldier growled, now help me up. So there's a page one, and further apologies for Wobble, who was um, doing that rotating thing to make himself a nest in my paperwork. Um, okay, so here's um, some of the, the notes that I made when I, I read it through back in the day. Sometimes I find, um, looking at this stuff, that I've been over picky. Sometimes I find I, I've missed things that now um, uh, strike me that I, that I should have said. Um, so this Ava Tolls is just, just introduced to us and we've no idea what it is. It's not from the Ava Tolls as if they're a thing. It's just from Ava Tolls. It could be a, a guy's name for all I know. It's capitalized, uh, which we wouldn't do for animals. You know, if it was giraffes coming, you wouldn't put capital G on those. So my, I assume it's a, a fantasy name. Um, and you know, it's got the, uh, the somewhat um, <clears throat> stereotyped and mocked uh, quote mark in the middle of it to make it extra fantasy. Um, <clears throat> not even the large campfire I sat by could keep those lurking beasts at bay. There's a little grammar error there. So if they are beasts, you know, why are they why capitalize them? Um, if they were wolves or lions, you know, they wouldn't be. And it, it described them as lurking. Well, lurking has a sort of stealthy context connotation to it. Um, if you're howling, <laughs> it's like saying that the howling beasts were creeping up on me. Well, if they're howling, they're not. Um, <clears throat> uh, so we've got this Scarlet Dawn. Uh, it does become obvious it's a weapon. So I guess I may be just um, being picky about saying it, that it would be easier just to call it a, you know, a gun or a pistol or whatever it is. Um, but this, um, and you know, 
there's actually uh, the fact it's got a crimson barrel makes it seem interesting because why would you paint a gun crimson? It doesn't sound like a soldier's weapon. It's not stealthy. Um, but that's at least prompting me to ask questions of a um, I'm curious nature. So that's good. Uh, and then we have this business of the soft moss, you know, like um, try try and use adjectives sparingly and and um, where they're needed. We know moss is soft. So, so why add soft moss? It's like saying the hot fire. It's a bit pointless. In fact, um, a, a writer would often use a word like moss to imply softness with a, with, in a more interesting way. Um, so let's lose the soft there. Um, large, I don't think that large added anything to the um, most forests are reasonably sizable. Otherwise, they're not a forest. Um, and the idea that these uh, bullets from the gun would just send a wolf, um, even a big one, into a killing rage. Um, so I've got a feeling we're in a fairly high tech um, context here. It certainly turns out we are later on. Um, a high tech weapon that you can fill a, an animal full of bullets and it just makes it angry. It sounds a bit... Um, I know you see this in a lot of things, but a lot of films uh, have a big monster and you machine gun it and it just goes, <laughs> that's not going to happen. You know, you machine gun an elephant or a whale and they're going to know about it. I mean, maybe a whale would just be a bit pissed off. But if you put a few machine gun bullets through a whale's head, I think it would um, rapidly become a dead whale. Anyway. Um, uh, we got, so we, we're talking about this this gun, uh, spending quite a lot of um, time describing this gun when we know there's a threat, there's these giant wolves coming in. Um, why are we giving all the uh, ins and outs of this particular gun? But fair enough. Um, this word, Nelia, I don't know what it means. It's not really adding anything there. I've already been told it's black and it's you, you so I know what it's made of and the colour. So what's the... Well, I don't know. Um, and then it says it bit my hand like it was meant to be there. I quite like that line. That's good. Yeah. But then he seems to spoil it by saying exactly like a glove. And it, it you know, exactly uh, gloves fit around your hand. So unless he's putting his hand inside the hilt of this gun somehow, I don't think it is exactly like a glove. And I would lose that. Um, and also um, he says it has a seven round magazine, but. Well. I'm not quite sure what the butt is doing there. Um, excuse the pun, uh, because there's no conflict. You normally say butt when you're when you're contradicting something. It's possible that the butt is because it's regular versus this, which may be unregular, non-regular. Uh, just a common error there. But, um, so there's a lot of brand name stuff here. We've got the the, the Paragon with a capital P and now. Uh, this Malvan with the Austria. Okay, well, let's move on and leave all that where it stands. Um, I say here that the stories, stories in general, are more compelling if the information comes at the reader um, rather than an in your face, I'm educating you sort of way. It just sort of comes from the side and is absorbed in a, in a nice way. And that can be done with very simple changes in, in the wording. Um, so, here we say, it was a power suit. I am educating you. Here I am. I'm the character. I know what it is. And now I'm talking to you, the reader, and I'm saying, it was a power suit for your benefit. It's distancing. I'm, I'm sort of taken out of the action. What you really want, if you're being attacked by giant wolves in a forest, is for the reader to be in that forest with you, worried that the giant wolves are going to bite you slash them. You want to identify, you want to close the distance between the reader and the character. So having the character instruct you about this power suit is a distancing thing. It says you're sitting in your chair in the comfort somewhere. I'm the one in the in, in the forest. Um, and you can just by saying like the power suit reflected the firelight rather than um, it was the power suit um, and it was reflecting the firelight. Uh, that, that very small change changes the character and the tone because when you say the power suit reflected the firelight, it implies the assumption that the reader knows all about it. The reader is part of the, the thing. The reader's invited in. You, you're one of the guys. You know what a power suit is. I don't have to explain it to you. I'm just telling you where it was uh, as opposed to what it was. Um, and this uh, rather, he says, it was the, the pinnacle of Malavan technology. 
again, you just say, just throw those words in without the as was the pinnacle of Malavan technology propped carelessly against the tree. Again, now it becomes less instructional, telling you it was the pinnacle of Malavan, and it's just part of it becomes adjectives that that again invite you in, make you feel part of it. It's a very small thing, but it these these small things can have a cumulative effect and uh, can help the writing. Its jet black camouflage was reflected in the light of the fire. Well, no. Possibly it was reflecting the light of the fire, but it wasn't reflected in the light of the fire. Um, and jet black is not really a traditional camouflage um, <laughs> colour, <laughs> unless you are trying to hide out in a coal mine. Uh, jet black is not, generally speaking, camouflage. I suppose in the dark, you know, your ninja, um, if it's black stuff on, but uh, I, I wouldn't call it camouflage. Vibrations shook the ground as I stood up. This is a tautology or redundant, um, you know, the ground shook as I stood up. Um, vibrations, what else are they going to do other than, than, than shake something? And now, if it wasn't for my scale, the dragon tail, I would have lost my balance. Um, well, these must be a hugely strong vibrations, more like an earthquake if you're going to lose your balance because of them. But we'll do that for a minute. I'm objecting here to the uh, introduction of the, the dragon tail. This is very for the reader. Um, again, it's distancing you. It's saying, you don't know what's going on here. You're not here. I'm going to tell you about stuff. Um, <clears throat> you don't know I have a dragon tail. I'm going to tell you I've got this dragon tail. Um, and I'm going to tell you it's scaled, uh, and I'm going to tell you it's, it's like a dragon tail. In a regular story, no nobody is ever going to say, if I hadn't had a second leg, I would have fallen over at that point, um, because we're human and we assume that everybody knows we have two legs. This character should assume in his narration that everybody knows he has a tail, and he should introduce it in a a more sideways manner um and i've just made a couple of simple suggestions you know i sprinted off tail thrashing or i swung my tail to to knock over just introduce it in a way that says you know i had a tail and and the reader will then know that they have a tail but not feel that they're being lectured on it not feel that they are outside the the, the text um so the tremors under my feet intensified. I hurried over to my power suit and climbed into it. So this is strange to me. These are giant wolves. Um, I don't know quite how giant, but even if they're Godzilla-sized, I feel that this whole business of the ground shaking is just um, uh, nonsense that has been fed to us partly from things like Jurassic Park and, and Troll Hunter. Um, and I feel that e even if you, you're dropping thousand kilogram weights on regular ground, and it's just 20 meters away. It's like at the end of your garden, your backyard, the, the coffee in your cup is, is not going to start rippling. Um, ground doesn't work that way. Um, and to have it shake so much that this guy would have fallen over without his tail, you know, no. I mean, you know, you could literally drop the city of London um, down the road and I wouldn't be... Um, uh, shake, shaken that much it's um it's not how our world works it's not how physics works and it is although it's been fed to us enough by films that we know what what he's talking about uh it does take me and probably some of some readers out of the text um now we talk about uh some running away stuff um and i've got to go and answer the the, front of the door so i'll be back No, truth that I was answering the door. One of them's for me. And it is what it is. It is this thing. Um, 
when I do uh, video conversations, uh, Zooming and whatnot, uh, get terrible sort of slowdowns and stutterings. Um, and although speed tests say that I have plenty of bandwidth for doing things like Zoom calls, uh, the results seem to say, no, you don't. Um, so this is to um, allow me to plug directly into the modem and see if that makes a difference. And if that doesn't make a difference, then I'll have to start talking to the um, provider. So where was I? Um, we find out that uh, this Nelia is the name of the forest. So there you go. So that the gun's grip was made from a, a black yew that was felled in this particular forest which seems to say it's a really big forest or he's really local. Um, landscape opens up to green hills and plains, I suppose. Um, it seems to me it really be one or the other. Um, what you could see would either be some hills or, or some plains. Um, talk about this great sword, sword sheathed on his back. Um, you know, if it's not impinging his, his, his movements, why are we talking about it? If you want to be in a point of view, you mention the things that occur to that point of view at the time they occur, the important things, <clears throat> you know, like my my foot fell off or, you know, um, I was suddenly hot or cold, but a thing on your back that's not causing any problems, you're not going to mention it. Um, and it's not even that he's about to use that sword. Um, so this is just essentially for the camera and it's um, a, a poor writing technique that makes the reader reminds the reader that they are reading and takes them out of, of the thing uh, so we get these um, dots on the heads up display um, it's not more than 30 meters from the edge of the forest which seems to imply it was pretty damn close to the edge of the forest in the first place um, and then he crashes into something which his motion sensor hadn't noticed well this is um, and say seem to be a really crappy motion sensor if it's not noticing things that are crashing into him. Um, uh, uh, motion sensors don't, I mean, this is anthropomorphizing, they don't notice things, but they work or they don't. So you could say whatever it was, the object hadn't registered on my display, but, but that's beside the point. The main point here just seems to be, it's a, <laughs> how can it be so bad that it doesn't notice something large crashing into you? Uh, turns out it's another person in, in armor um, I don't know what an Amlan is, and I'm not sure it was uh, important to add here. Um, uh, and didn't you see my location on the damn map again? It seems extraordinary that the person didn't. This, the whole point of these displays and this armour is to be situational awareness, and yet they're literally running into each other. Um, now, some talk about, I mean, it's nice to have a bit of banter, I just don't really understand it. These damned elder gods... Um, so the, the wolves that are chasing them are also elder gods. Um, okay. Um, or maybe there's something else going on, I don't know. Um, and uh, you would imagine that the, the newcomer had also had all this information and, and felt the vibrations, yada, 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 um, on their Paragon armor display. Um, and also when the wolves were like a long way away or longish way off and the ground was shaking enough to to make the guy need his tail to stay upright um now they're only um 300 meters away is it a lot closer um it seems like the these vibrations should be um uh, making running impossible and having the trees fall down but who knows um And this discussion about whether they're going to make their stand in the woods or outside. I mean, again, why would he be running towards the edge of the wood unless his plan was to make his, his stand outside? Um, the word paragon is is used a lot. I think maybe too much. Once you start getting into these jar this jargon, it could be a, uh, you can find that it's scattered around too often becomes a bit uh, noticeable because it's over repeated. Um, and the, the fact that this, this second person crashing into him has um seems to have buggered up their armor makes it sound shittier by the second i mean uh this armor didn't notice that there was someone charging towards her him uh and then appears to have broken from the impact uh okay um and then you will have to pay for this uh the soldier growled i'm just suggesting that uh, use a contraction you'll um 
I often say contractions in, in dialogue are, are good. They make it feel more realistic that we all use contractions. Um, we say your, we say your, um, and often writers will fail to put that into dialogue where they should, because then it's when you read it back in your mind or it's spoken on an audio book, uh, it sounds much more realistic. Uh, and sometimes I have characters who don't use contractions um, and I do it specifically to indicate that they are speaking in a different manner. Um, that they may be more restrained or more scholarly or more uptight. I don't know, but it's making the distinction between them and the other characters. Um, but generally, you, you should um, uh, use contractions, especially when they're arguing and it's a time when you're much more likely to use them than, than um, uh, a more formal setting. Um, so overall, I was a bit confused. Um, let's say first that this this page one actually does, um, if you tick the boxes, pretty much all of the things that my 101 um, page one advice says you should do. It starts with a simple situation. It starts with um, a clear threat, some action, um, and we get some dialogue. Um, and all of those things are great. Um, and my problems are here are merely to do with the execution, how that actually ended up on the page. But the, the key elements, um, and of course, this is not the only way to write a page one. And it's not going to give you necessarily the best page one in the world. But I feel that if you do start with a simple situation, it's easy for the reader to comprehend and give them some action and some dialogue. Those are very um, inviting elements that will pull someone into a story rapidly um, and we see them all here uh, but i have i have notes because of the way it was done um, and the problem is you know the um the giant wolves and the the activities of the arming up and the running away uh, he meets a new friend and has some dialogue um with, with her uh, i was a bit confused i was i'm left wondering why he lit this fire um because you know he's he's got a battle suit um, which has power for running around and all sorts of activities. Um, it doesn't seem like he'd need it to stay warm. Uh, it's not scaring off the wolves because he already said it wouldn't do that, um, and he didn't want to attract the wolves because he's running away from them. So that's slightly unclear. Um, the the problem here, one of the problems, is that this business of wanting to bit over eager to educate me in all of the um the ins and outs of the world and it's a sort of in your face education as i've already discussed um but i am left with uh with a bunch of questions um but some of my questions are more to do with questioning the text than the story uh the questions you should be left with are story questions about what's going to happen next um whereas i'm left with sort of more niggle questions about you know, why why would this happen why would that happen that doesn't make sense to me questions as opposed to i'm interested questions um and this character we've spent this time with them and they're in jeopardy and yet we know basically nothing about them um there's no clue as to what they're doing there's no um clue as to their internal process we Wobble is making a noise here. Wobble, come here. Oh, you're big. Oh, you're too big. Um, we don't know if he's scared at the prospect of being eaten, if he's excited, if he's angry, um, if he's bloodthirsty, does he want to kill these things? Is he um, Has he used his weapons before? Is this the first combat he'll ever be in? Uh, we don't really have a, a sense of his sense of humour. He doesn't seem to be um, giving us any... Um, he's not sarcastic or, or, or world-weary about the, the failures of the instrumentation. Um, there's just nothing. He, he's just a blank. He's just telling us some stuff that happened. <clears throat> and I want, <clears throat> I want to see his emotion. I want to see him be scared or angry. I want to see uh, some some goals for him. I want to know what he what what he hopes to get out of this situation. Um, just just more. Um, and um, you know that may come on on following pages. But I, I want some sense of the main character 
on page one, I want to know that they have some character to make me want to turn the page and, and spend more time in this person's um, uh, company. And they don't have to be um, like someone I want to hang out with necessarily. They could just be bloody angry about something or they could be a really nasty bit of work or they could be funny um, or desperate, but something. Uh, and I finished up saying I put a lot of um, red ink on the page, but there's there's some good stuff here too. As I said, the bones of it are the right sort of bones. And I, uh, I feel that the areas I've talked about tightening up are pretty easy to tighten up. And um, if that was done, then it would be a, a, a nice page one and we could move on from there. Uh, apologies for the various interruptions. And um, I'm going to stop now rather than let this drag on too long. I will hit the off button. Catch you next time.